Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another 5-Minute Friday. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. This Sunday, we are going to be continuing our series of lessons looking chronologically at the life of Jesus Christ, the most, without a shadow of a doubt, influential life that ever walked the face of the earth. And we're going to be looking on Sunday at a very interesting and, I will admit, difficult section of Scripture from Luke chapter 16. Luke 16 begins with what is often referred to as the parable of the dishonest manager. And this parable can be very, very confusing. In fact, I want to encourage you to go ahead and have Luke 16 verses 1 through 13 read before you come to church on Sunday. That's going to help you at least get your bearings about you with this very difficult section of Scripture. And from a parable about money, Luke is then going to move into Jesus' actual teaching about money. And the chapter will end with another parable that we know well, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And in this parable, money is both part of the story and a major part of the point that Jesus is making. In fact, if you don't see Jesus' teaching on money in this parable, then I just got to tell you, you have missed something. You have missed something. Luke 16 contains some of Jesus' strongest and most explicit warnings about the dangers of wealth. And one of the things that we will see is that God expects us to view money not as a possession, but more, more of a trust. God entrusts property to people, and he expects us then to use that for his glory, for the welfare of his children, not for our private glory or our private glamour. Not only that, Jesus teaches us that money is one of those things that is supposed to point beyond itself. It's supposed to point to the true riches that await us in the life that is to come. And so the heart of Jesus' teaching is a lesson about faithfulness. And this is what we're going to be tackling on Sunday. I really hope that you're going to take the time to join us. Uh, this is going to be a very, very important lesson on Jesus and money. And we're going to look at it, hopefully, in a way that maybe you haven't thought about before. So it is critical that we, as the people of God, learn what Jesus wants us to learn about money. I don't know if you knew, know this or not, but there are more than 2,400 Bible verses from Genesis to Revelation that talk about money and our use of it. But here's the thing. All of those verses about money, those 2,400 plus verses, they can be summed up by what Jesus says in Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus says, no servant can serve two masters. He's either going to hate the one and love the other, or he's going to be devoted to one, and he's going to despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, or God and riches, or older versions say you cannot serve God and money. And when we put all of these Luke 16 passages together, we find the call of God on our life to be faithful. Faithful in how we use our money. Faithful to God rather than money. Faithful in our hearts, not just in our outward appearances that we show the people around us. Faithful to the kingdom which has now begun in Jesus Christ. Faithfulness in our marriages. Because in the middle of Luke 16, there's this verse thrown in there about marriage. See, here's the thing. As soon as we begin to think of money or land or our possessions or other people, as soon as we begin to think of them as commodities that we can own or things that we can exploit for our own advantages, then we are taking a step away from God's call in our lives and we are pledging our allegiance to the wrong God. We're making the wrong choice. It's going to be an important Sunday. And I sure hope that you'll join us. Whether in person or online, we want you uh, to, to tune in this Sunday. Come, be a part of what's going on. If at all possible, we want to see you in person. I just think this is going to be a very critical Sunday for us as the people of God here in Decatur, Alabama, or wherever you might be watching from. So I sure hope that you'll join us. Until we meet again, until uh, next time, we just want to ask that God would bless your life. And more than that, we pray that you'll put in a good word for Jesus everywhere you go. Have a great week, and good Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday. Take care.